name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the Paschal sacrifice, be favorable to the supplications of your people, so that Christ, our High Priest, interceding on our behalf, may by his likeness to ourselves bring us reconciliation and by his equality with you, free us from our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. 
But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Because you have seen me, says the Lord, blessed are those who have not seen but still believe. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever disobeys the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord.
my sisters and brothers. Welcome to Rome and Holy Spirit Church, the Chiesa di Santo Spirito in Sassia, on this magnificent occasion to recall with gratitude the life and mission of Mother Mary of the Annunciation, whom we know as Mother Angelica. I have to confess right away that other than by reputation, I never had the occasion to meet her personally. I have met, however, so many who have been touched by her life and the ministry of EWTN Network that she founded, many of whom encountered Christ and are Christian because of her life and witness. Assuredly, her life has been an inspiration to many and, dare I say, a challenge for some. We gather today to mark the centenary of her birth on April 20th, 1923 in Canton, Ohio, to Italian immigrant parents. Her early life was not easy. Family life was difficult and painful at times, nor did she have a conducive environment in the formative years of her life that we come to expect today for one to excel and succeed. She described her early life with her mother as a matter of mere survival, like a pair of refugees from one crisis to the next. The brokenness she experienced, however, prepared her for a further grace, an encounter with the healing power of Christ. In spite of many setbacks with family life, with school, with her health, she didn't consider herself a victim, as broadly understood today, or a victim of circumstances, but an instrument of God's providence and a witness to God's healing grace. For instance, she said, or it was said of her by an author, that she suffered, she had a stomach ailment that Rizzo had from 1939 continued to cause severe abdominal pain despite the extensive medical treatment she received. And her mother took her to Rhoda Wise, who was hailed as a mystic and stigmatic, and who claimed to receive visions of St. Therese of Lisieux. Wise instructed Rizzo to pray a novena, a nine-day course of prayers, and made the girl promise that she would spread devotion to the saint if she was cured. On January 17, 1943, following the novena's final day, Rizzo declared that she woke up with little pain and the ab abdominal lump causing it had vanished. This experience profoundly touched her. She believed that God had performed a miracle and she traced her lifelong commitment to God to this event. She later told an interviewer at that point I knew that God knew me and loved me and was interested in me. All I wanted to do after my healing was give myself to Jesus. God knew me and loved me and was interested in me and give myself to Jesus. Those were her words. And they described the impact and the effects of an encounter with Christ which was amplified by her love of the Eucharist, both at Mass and in adoration. The journey to truth, the journey to understand the deepest part of ourselves, begins with an encounter with the mystery, that is, with God, most often in an unexpected moment when we least expect it. And that event is similar to many narrated in the Gospels, even more poignantly so during the Easter season. Encounters with Christ, the experience of healing and providence were road markers for her on her exceptional life journey. Most especially for the child Jesus, el Santo Niño, the divine child, who for her was love incarnate. She fostered devotion to the divine child, and as a result, she shared her experience with all and for all as she promised she would and she would not, could not remain silent in the midst of the greatest gift she came to know in her life, Jesus Christ. She sought to proclaim it from the rooftops 
through the airwaves, and through satellite and a network to the entire world. Our readings touch on the amazing phenomenon illustrated by those same sentiments. In the Acts of the Apostles, you can see how unsettling the Jesus and even more so the risen Jesus question became for the Sanhedrin, the high religious authorities, as they attempted to maintain good civil order. Quite obviously, it was a neurologic issue they wished they had, didn't have to contend with and tried to suppress. Naturally, they thought that everything was returning to normal after his death. On the cross and burial, it was so definitive. So the fact that his disciples were teaching in the public squares had to be dealt with. Thus, they were ordered to stop teaching in that name. The more they were told not to, the more compelled they felt to do so. Not unlike what Mother was doing, nothing could stop this dynamo of faith. Neither she nor the apostles held back. The more they saw that God or the experience of God is removed from the civil discourse in society, the more they felt they had to find new ways to proclaim and teach in that name, in the name of Jesus. For the power was not in them, them personally, but in the saving name of Jesus that is one who saves. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth, we proclaimed a few moments ago in the responsorial psalm, and it was for her. Above all, the apostles were witnesses of what happened to Jesus. They could not deny the experience and willingly shared it with those who came to know them. In our episode in the Acts of the Apostles today, this included even preaching about that name to the court officials. And about this passage, St. John Chrysostom writes, God allowed the apostles to be brought to trial so that their adversaries might be instructed if they so desired. And the apostles are not irritated by the judges. They plead with them compassionately, with tears in their eyes, and their only aim is to free them from error and from divine wrath. Only later in tomorrow's reading do we learn that Peter's preaching had some effect. One of them, Gamaliel, reasoned that if this truly is of God, they would not be able to stop it. And if it is not, the movement would die out naturally. So their preaching bore some initial fruit, and his analysis was correct. Mother's religious name, Sister Mary Angelica of the Annunciation, also provides another clue for our consideration. The angel comes with a message, a message of hope. Messaging is quite foundational as part of the angelic mission. We don't have to go to God. No, God has come to us in a way we can see him face to face and can understand. If we use the incarnation as an explanation, we could say, God became man, the Word became flesh. That is, the Word didn't merely become a nice idea. The Word became flesh. Salvation, the victory over sin and death, won for us by Christ, needs to be trumpeted, utilizing all the new means and methods available to us today. The message of salvation offers us hope. Perhaps the question comes to mind when we hear about Christianity. The question is this, is it possible to live this way, the way Christ proposed? The apostles, saints, and our tradition over 2,000 years suggest that yes, it is indeed possible. And reading Mother Angelica's biography, one can attest, yes, it's possible. It can be done, and is done by countless new witnesses in their own life circumstances today. Their lives are lived worthily, lived in hope in the midst of adversity, and lived by deeds of mercy rather than criticism or skepticism, Li lives of steadfast certainty rather than constant victimization. The zealousness of the apostles would not survive if the saving event of Christ had not occurred. 
if his resurrection was a fiction, if he had not sent the Holy Spirit to be handed on from one generation to the next to the present day. We are truly blessed to know about such witnesses, and they can teach us about keeping our eyes focused and fixed on Christ himself. They wouldn't be able to do so if Christ were not the foundation and center of their lives. My friends, on this centenary of Mother's birth, during, the season of the, during this Easter season here in Rome, in the church under the patronage of the Holy Spirit, where the image of divine mercy is enshrined, we gather in grateful hope and appreciation for this amazing religious woman with the love of Christ in her heart and intrepid apostolic zeal sought to share the saving message of Christ to the world. As in the past, we commend her to God's abiding mercy and draw strength from her conviction that we too can be bold witnesses for Christ. We must give our lives to Jesus and let ourselves be transformed by him. Is it possible to live this way? It was for the apostles on mission and the early church. It was for Mother Angelica, and it is possible for us too. Again, we thank the Lord for this extraordinary gift of her life and commend her to the Lord's merciful gaze. May God bless you all. Risen Lord, as we commemorate the 100th anniversary of the birth of Mother Angelica, the beloved foundress of Eternal Word Television Network, we thank you for the gift of her life and her dedicated service to the Church. We humbly come before you seeking your blessings. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, the leader of the Catholic Church, that he may be guided by the Holy Spirit in his teachings and decisions and be strengthened in his efforts to promote peace, justice, and love in the world. We pray to the Lord. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. Per le intenzioni di WTN affinché questa rete globale di media cattolici possa continuare a diffondere gli insegnamenti della Chiesa, pur muovere la devozione all'Eucaristia, alla Beata Vergine Maria e alla Santità della Vita. Preghiamo. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. Per tutti i donatori di WTN, qui soutiennent généreusement la mission d'évangélisation pour les médias, enfin qu'ils soient bénis pour leur générosité et leur engagement à diffuser le message de l'Évangile. Nous prions le Seigneur. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayers. Pour nuestros afiliados, para que continúen sosteniendo las enseñanzas de la Iglesia Católica, promoviendo el mensaje del Evangelio, en sus propios países y siendo ejemplo vivo de la presencia de Cristo en la tierra. Oremos, Señor. We pray to Lord. Min ajli jamia al amilin fil kita al alami, ka yastakhdimu mawahibahum wa minasatahum al alamiya, li ta'aziz al haqiqa, wal jamal, wal khair, wa yusaidu fi binai sakafati al hayat, wal mahabba. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. За всех зрителей и сторонников и WTN, чтобы они были благословлены благодатью укреплять свою веру, углублять свое посвящение Евхаристии и Пресвятой Деве Марии, 
и жить как радостные и верные ученики Иисуса Христа. Молимся Господу. We pray. Für das Wachstum von EWTN möge die Verbreitung der frohen Botschaft des Evangeliums bei den Seelen auf fruchtbaren Boden fallen, damit EWTN weiterhin eine Quelle der Inspiration, Bildung und spirituellen Nahrung für Katholiken und für alle Suchende nach Wahrheit auf der ganzen Welt sein möge. Beten wir zum Herrn. In Christ our Lord. Father, we thank you for the gift of Mother Angelica and her profound impact on the Church and the world through EWTN. May her life and legacy continue to inspire us to live authentic Catholic lives, and may her intercession bring us closer to you. We ask this through risen, our risen Christ, our Lord. Amen. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conform conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. So Are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope and Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come in my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.